We've had a few customers request a workflow video for shooting 360 gemstone and or diamonds and uh, that's what we'll be doing today. Um, I'm working with my uh, with the Iconesis LED Jewelry Studio and the Iconesis 360 Jewelry Photography Turntable along with the Shutterstream 360 software. Uh, my first step is to enable live view. That's going to stream a real-time preview of what our camera sees onto our monitor screen. You're going to see if I put my hand in front of my subject, you're, you can see it kind of going back and forth. So uh, let me just close the uh, top of the studio again here. And um, essentially what I want to do from here, first and foremost, my first step is always going to be optimizing my camera settings for my lighting environment. So I can change my aperture, my shutter speed, white balance, sensitization to optimize for my lighting. Um, and essentially after I found my optimal lighting setting, um, those will be retained from shot to shot. One thing I'll mention is that if it looks a little dark or light on your end, all monitors show uh, colors a little bit differently. Um, so I'm just going off what looks best on my monitor. Um, the other next step would be to adjust my focal point. Uh, we do have full control over our adjusting our focal point. As you can see, as I hit near or far, it's actually driving the lens and I can actually zoom in a little bit closer and you can see we're, we're pretty far out of focus here, but I can start to bring it back into focus here. Um, it's always a little bit trickier with gemstones um, or opaque items because you can see right through them and it's hard to see. So I try to look for kind of a front edge. The other thing you can do is just adjust your focal point through uh, twisting the lens left and right. And that's actually what I'm doing right now. Twisting my lens left and right to try to find my optimal focal point. Let's say that looks pretty good. I'll actually zoom this out instead of that one-to-one -one view. And the next step will be, I just want to take one quick sample photo. Um, actually, if I hold shift when I crop, I can crop in a perfect square. I could also define a, uh, define a custom ratio. So let's crop in a perfect square and let's just quickly shoot a sample image here just to see how that's going to look before we get started into our 360 workflow. Uh, to me, visually, that looks quite good. I'm just going to delete that image now and then we're going to enter into the, the 360 portion of the workflow. Um, so I'll hit my live view again. Um, as we can see, it popped up a little window here. Our first step in the 360 area is to start a preview. That's going to give us a pre-rotation. Uh, we visually want to ensure we're positioned our object in the center of the turntable. The next thing that we want to do is crop around our subject. Um, obviously, we could shoot the whole entire frame, but not really required um, since we can actually pre-crop this. So I'll define my crop area. Uh, looks pretty good there. Next I can define how many frames I want to shoot. I'm just going to shoot 36 for the purpose of this uh, uh, of this video. When I hit start, I'll hit OK. And that's going to automate my image capture workflow. So it's going to go snap, turn, stop, snap, turn, stop, snap in that sequence for, again, because I defined 36 frames, it'll shoot 36 frames. Users do have the ability to shoot up to 200 individual frames. Um, a lot of our gemstone customers and jewelry customers in general actually prefer more than 36. Um, so we usually see customers going around 48 or 72 when shooting smaller kind of macro photography items such as a ring or a gemstone or a diamond. Uh, one thing I'll mention during this video is uh, I would encourage... Uh, it's, it's, it's rare that we see our competitors offer these types of videos. Um, and I think it's, uh, we've had a chance to work with a lot of their solutions and um, I would just uh, be a little bit cautious and certainly I would encourage if considering other solutions from different providers to get a workflow video or get a live demo just to see exactly how it works. Um, that uh, from our tests, uh, our solutions are superior, but by all means, I would encourage looking at all, at all, uh, at all players in the industry, and um, I think you will notice that our solution is uh, uh, very good, um, feature-packed software, very easy to use, great quality results, and at a fraction of the price our competitors too. Um, so just just a just a little note on that. Um, all right, so we're just about done. You can see the progress bar, 97% up in the top right. Okay, 360 image capture successful. Uh, great. Now what we can do is select all our images. I'll enter into my editing tool. We have got a full editing suite inside of here. Let me just do a couple just very basic edits here. Um, I just just to communicate that uh, 
you can do it in a batch process. So I make my small little edits and let's pretend that is you know, the route we want to go. I'll hit apply to all now and it actually will do it to every single image in this queue that we shot, all 36 frames. It's going to, uh, it's going to edit those in a batch process, uh, which is a very nice time saver for, for uh, customers of, of Iconesis. And after we're done with the editing process, let's go and output these. So I'll just rename this call Sample Diamond. Um, we'll just call it 36 because it was 36 frames. Okay, and then I'm going to, uh, you could also choose the battery size your images. For instance, if you need everything at 500 pixels wide, you could do so. I won't do that for the purpose of this demo. I'll just go ahead and output these in the max resolution. Um, I'll hit OK. And I should have this folder open where I'm saving to. And here we go. We can see all the images that are being output right now. Um, I'm working with a Canon Rebel T5 camera, um, 18 megapixel. Um, I'm only shooting at medium JPEG quality. Um, you can see these images are at 971 by 971. If I was shooting at large JPEG quality, um, I would expect these to be probably close to double that size. I still would expect 971 by 971 to be more than sufficient for your web requirements. But again, if you need high resolution, that's not a problem. It just comes down to the camera's megapixels and just setting the camera correctly. And again, we provide free tech support with all with all our products. So we're always just a phone call away if you ever get stuck um, and you have any questions about that sort of stuff. As you can see, it's spinning a little bit fast here. Um, I'm just going to make this a, let's say it's a six second spin. Uh, you have full control over the look, the feel, the aesthetics, the, um, you know, the, the, the uh, variables in the 360 player, including even the buttons down here. Um, and as you can see, this is the uh, 360 product view that we just created. Um, you can click and drag. They're all user interactive. Um, and for this output, I'll just output that. I can choose 750 pixels wide. I'll choose my output folder there and I'll just hit save. And then we're, we're done. We're on to shooting our next 360 product view. Very fast, very efficient, uh, very good quality results. I'll also include the, uh, the URL to this hosted 360 product view in the video description. If you have any questions, let us know. We're always a uh, phone call or an email away. Thank you.